Zero Farm, and this is called Subaru has no character. But according to him, from Mr. Kamimashita, I'd like to hear the state give it to me. To be or not to be, that is the question. And quite mm. eerily enough, applies just as well to Natsuki Subaru as it does Prince Hamlet. Okay. This is one of the most famous lines of Shakespeare, alongside what's in a name, a rose by any name would smell as sweet, and Lord, what fools these mortals be. However, much like myself, I find I am too tiny brain monkey to understand <laughs> any of Shakespearean plays, any of Hamlet, but in his essence, right? To be or not to be explained like I'm five. Uh, here, here, let's get a quick little summary before we get into this, because I probably should understand this, right? I got a random Reddit post here that says, What the fuck is Hamlet talking about when he says to be or not to be? Uh, okay, um... Okay, I'll take a random comment from 10 years ago, it's got 16 helpful, so surely he's gotta be telling the truth, right? He's wondering if it's worth dealing with all of his problems anymore, or if it'd just be easier to ki- Oh! Yo, that's like, exactly what Subaru is going through. At first, He's wondering why everyone isn't just killing himself. <laughs> it's, it's like going to sleep and forgetting their job. <laughs> Damn, this, this Hamlet guy must be so sad and emo if he just assumes that everyone should just like off themselves in order to like relieve themselves of the suffering of the world. I don't think everyone truly feels like this. Like as terrible life can be, you know, because you can experience the suffering and the pain, you can also feel the happiness. Life doesn't have to be just pure suffering. There's also the good sides to it. Once he considers that nobody really knows what comes after his death, he realizes that people who would rather deal with all kinds of horrible things than take the risk that dying actually really sucks. Okay, wait, that's an insane, that's an insane cell. What? So this guy is a literally like, hmm, I don't understand why people don't just end themselves because life is suffering. But these kids are all pussies that don't know what's going to happen after death. Therefore, they don't kill themselves. <laughs> like, what? He is contemplating suicide to be, to live or not to be, not to live. He's wondering if life is worth even living, if one feels that achieving happiness merely for having lived, or if it's just not worth the struggle at all. Well, here's my take on this. I think that... Life is definitely suffering. Not everyone is going to achieve their goals and dreams and ideals. No. However, simply having the pursuit of your goals, ideals, dreams, whether or not it comes true or not, that pursuit is the fulfillment majority of people feel. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. It's a very corny line. But truly, once people achieve their goals and dreams, they get extremely depressed because they have nothing to go for anymore. Human beings need something to fixate on to work toward or they start ruminating about life and wonder why they even exist. So I think that there is value in living, even if they're suffering, just as they're suffering as a counterpart to happiness. I find that many lack the knowledge of context that enriches these lines so. After all, I don't think many of us have opened our dusty copies of No Fear Shakespeare for quite a while. I don't have one. It took a second for me to remember that to be... I don't remember the last time I've read an actual book. Not even in high school. I would not read books. I was too busy reading manga. Be or not to be was, for one, about contemplating suicide. Mm. Literally, should I be? Should I exist? Or should I... Oh my god, guys. I just figured something out. To be or not to be. Natsuki Subaru. Not to be Subaru. I think that Shakespeare, Hamlet, they, they, they all fucking knew about the story of ReZero and, 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 and basically Nagatsuki Tape is the reincarnation of Shakespearean Hamlet shit and therefore the not to be wordplay of Natsuki Super. I think I'm onto something here, guys. Should I cease to be? That's what Hamlet is asking. Is it better to live or die? And second, this is far from being a single snappy line, like the lady doth protest too much or to thine own self be true. No, it is but the first opening line of many, all composing Hamlet's soliloquy, an introspective and torturous look within. This is too big brain for me. Now, why am I showing random clips of ReZero while mouthing off to you about soliloquies? Because according to him. Because much in the same way that Shakespeare used soliloquies and monologues as key character development, 
forcing them to lay bare both what they thought and what they thought they thought. ReZero's most important scene hinges on that very same concept. Okay. It's one from which the entire foundation of the show rests upon. 18, about to be or not to be, as in to be, to not give up, or to not to be, to give up and run away with Rem, to Kararagi, right? That's the whole thing that happened in 18 about how it's not easy to give up, but it is easy to give up. Which is interesting in and of itself because it happens two arcs in. But first, we need to know exactly what a soliloquy is, and I didn't choose Hamlet's for no reason. Okay. Not only is it one of the most well-known, and rightfully so, Hamlet and Subaru share much, much more in common than one would think. They're both thrust into situations come taken over the throne and married his mother. However, he is stricken with moral unrest as he struggles with what to do now. Okay. To take action to avenge his father's death, or to simply give up. Okay, to be or not to be. Okay, so far, like, <laughs> listen. All I do is just watch anime all day, okay? I just yell at titties on screen and yell bald when there's bald people on screen. Everything that's been said so far has just gone over my fucking brain. But I think I know what's going on. He is comparing Hamlet to ReZero, the character of Hamlet and Subaru. And right now, he's establishing exactly what it is to not live or to live. Death or to simply give up okay. for the sake of the country. Sound familiar? Both Hamlet and Subaru go through this period of limbo, yeah. desperately trying to muster the courage to do what must be done. But instead of doing anything actually useful, they get lost in the weeds of meaningless frivolities in terror of the unknown. Hamlet literally decides to just act insane, hoping to buy time to collect evidence for Claudius' crimes. Hmm, act insane. Uh, I know Subaru wasn't acting insane, but there were parts in Arc 3 where Supposedly, Betrigius is claiming that Subaru is acting insane. He spends his time meandering about, insulting his friends and family in the name of madness, which ultimately directly leads to their misfortunes. Meanwhile, Subaru is doing much of the same. During the mansion arc, he puts up a front that is instantly seen through by Amelia and the others, right. generating levels of worry and attention that he's trying to avoid in the first place. Like this is the over-trying? because every run must count and he's trying so hard to figure out what's going on but by trying way too hard it becomes way more suspicious and he stinks even more of the witch's scent and this directly relates to his season 2 character development where we realize that his entire life on Japan was trying to impress people as he realized that he's not special, right? He shows up to the royal selection despite Emilia's wishes but more importantly in spite of the fact that he can't really do anything Smile. anyway. Mm. He constantly postures, but with nothing to support that posturing. When everything finally gets to him, he channels Hamlet and feigns madness. And all he gets for- Well, this part, was he feigning madness? I don't think so. I think that Betrigius is on a different level of madness, and he claims that Subaru is acting crazy, which may seem true if you assume that true madness is Betrigius's level. However, I think that Subaru was mind broken and he, he's like a 3 out of 10 on the crazy level. Betrigus is a 10. That's why it seems like he's acting mad. For it is even more pain and suffering, not just for him, but those around him. For Hamlet, his soliloquy comes at a point where he finally realizes that he is stalling and hates himself for it. Okay. A soliloquy from the Latin solo to oneself and loquar I talk is a device Shakespeare I uses talk to often, myself. and is a way for one to really get into a character's head. Musing in solitude, often a character's true thoughts and feelings pour uncontrollably from them, flooding the audience as they desperately try to grasp for meaning. They're often filled with things they would never pontificate to another character. This, this. <laughs> I am in no way qualified to give any sort of criticism to this guy. Absolutely not. I am out of my league right now. I am a fucking tadpole out of the fucking ocean and put into the fire grill of this big IQ video. However, in order to compel an audience of monkeys, which are most people that watch videos on YouTube for ReZero, <laughs> I feel like a simplified version that really explains it in a simple way would be a little bit more digestible, you know? Like, like I'm following, but like... I don't think most people that enjoy ReZero is going to watch this and be like, oh, true, they're going to be clocked out by the first 30 seconds. And thus strike at the heart of what they truly care about. In To Be or Not To Be, Hamlet yeah. balances the two ideas on a scale. On one hand, to be, 
suffering the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Okay. And on the other hand, not to be. To just end to yourself. To take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. Hamlet is saying that life is agony, marked yep. by countless suffering, corruption, and pain. In contrast, he likens death to the closest thing he can think of. I think that Hamlet is a fucking loser. Yup. Be mad all you want, English majors. I don't care. I think that Hamlet is an absolute loser, despite the situation that he was placed into. For sure, I could understand why he approaches life like that. But to just think that death is the greatest achievement in life because your entire life was suffering is literally self-reporting that you are a weak man and you can't fucking figure it out. A literal skill issue, the babbling of a fucking emotionally distressed loser. That's what I think Tamil is right now. To die, to sleep. And perhaps sleep is a state preferable to living. Slumber, after all, is portrayed as peaceful. But he quickly goes against this. He says, to sleep, perchance to dream. Hey, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? The dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will. And As in, like, people don't know what's going to happen after death. Therefore, you know, the whole thing is, Hamlet states that people should just off themselves if you want to end the suffering. But most people won't do that in fear of the unknown of death. Therefore, they exist to suffer. Makes us rest. You got now, the revenge. What about our sometimes giddy, sometimes tormented Natsuki Subaru? Yeah. Where is his turning point? Turning point. I think there's multiple turning points. If you consider a turning point as a significant point in the story where his character just changes, there are a couple. But I think the biggest one probably is 18, right? Because that's when it seems like he's at rock bottom. Rem is there to kind of build him up. And his perception of himself of being just like a loser is completely changed as Rem says, you're my hero. And then he goes on to just subjugate the white whale. And then hours later, defeat one of the most active archbishops that's terrified this world. He literally awakened into a hero overnight thanks to Rem. Now, it wasn't overnight. There was multiple loops over and over and over of suffering and learning and suffering and learning. But I feel like 18 is definitely a significant turning point. But there is definitely a lot of different points too, right? I'm thinking of like, what is the most impactful? Right? I think that there's many different pit points where Subaru like definitely goes through these events and learns, but I feel like 18 was the most significant in season one. Up until episode 18, Subaru pretty much outwardly wears a mask, both to the other characters as well as the audience. We're rarely given the opportunity to see what he's really thinking, and mm. by extension, how self-aware he really is. Does he really think that he's this world's saving grace? the summoned protagonist meant to save the pretty girl and rid the world of its ills? He'd like to be. At least to me, his character was equally frustrating as entertaining, constantly doing things to undermine his efforts and legitimacy. I often found myself thinking, dude, what's your deal? <laughs> True. True. <laughs> but I've seen a lot of isekais, and usually the isekai main characters are just like a loser from Japan, and they have a lot of bottled-up trauma and a bunch of dumb shit that they have to overcome so like i understand like why he would act like it and now in season two with the backstory it makes a lot more sense but true <laughs> and worked up over his scheme to escape with rem to a faraway land he tells us for the first time let's run away he says this is the kind of man i am yeah i have no strength but i want it all i have no knowledge but all i do is dream that's right, and I've accomplished nothing, yet I claim to be all this. That is true arrogance. There's nothing I can do, but I struggle in vain. Hamlet's speech to himself is 259 words. Subaru's deluge of sheer self-hatred is whopping 400 and Never mind. And that's not counting the lead-up and Rem's eventual refutation. At the risk of sounding pretentious, this was the moment that ReZero really clicked for me. Before this meeting, it was good fun. Well, as much fun as suffering could be. It clicked? I feel like ReZero clicked for me since like episode one, but it depends on what you mean by click. If you mean like trying to understand this character of Subaru, then maybe, yeah. But like from the beginning, just, oh, I'm, I was just so engrossed with the show. Subaru was a frustrating, but kind of simple character. And I was watching mostly in anticipation of the almost indulgent cliffhangers the show dangled in front of you week after week. 
But now, here was a character doing some serious introspection, letting us know all along that he knows what he is. How full of yourself do you have to be to believe that you've been sent to save the world? Especially when you're as powerless as he. Well, in hindsight, that might not be so pretentious, because now we get more lore of what could have possibly happened. It was an actual pact or some shit made with Satala in the first loot. Was he given the witch factor and the power of regression there and then forgot the memories? Is he actually an ancient hero sent back in time? I don't fucking, there's a lot of different theories, but like, there's a good chance that like, I don't know, it's not just like a random kid showing up, there's actually a reason. In a comment seemingly as applicable metatextually as it is to this situation, Subaru calls himself empty. Mm. He has no character. What's important to note about these kinds of things- He has no character. He's empty. Well, we know the type of person Natsuki Subaru is ever since season 2 and the backstory of him just being a fucking neat due to him peaking early and being compared to father and wanting to be better and then reducing other people's accomplishments by trying to be the class clown but it never working out and then falling deeper into deeper into despair and depression. But still at the heart of it, I think that there's this like, is he just completely void and empty? Is that an accurate assessment? Maybe. I mean, he himself is saying it. Things is that even though they're windows to the soul, they aren't necessarily truth. They're true as in that's what the characters think, yes. The perception of themselves. But more often than not, what's more important is what they're wrong about. Hamlet's soliloquy is him letting the audience and himself know that he is not mad. That he is truly wrestling with the dilemma in front of him. And at the end, accepting that he must take action. Okay. It is him cursing life in fear for giving him no choice. Similarly, Subaru is also wrestling with an action, though suicide isn't exactly an option for him. He thinks that he's done all he can, or at least all that he's possible of. He thinks he, he did. He cites his life of nothingness, his rotten character, his powerlessness and incompetence. This is the nothing part, his own perception of the loser he is here, but that's according to him. And the video is according to him, right? But it's all about the perceived notion of oneself, and Rem sees the exact opposite. But we know better, and so does Rem. As Subaru continues to pile on self-insult after self-insult, she finally blurts out, All you know is yourself. How much do you know of the Subaru-kun that I see? Mm -hmm. Hey, there's the rub. The idealized because version. someone with no character, Subaru certainly has a lot of charm. People deride Rem for transitioning from an okay character to a waifu bot, but she serves an indispensable role here. Waifu bot. It's possible that True. without Rem and going through all the trouble of saving her, Subaru would never have been able to be brought back from the brink. She reveals to him that he's been focusing on all the wrong things and neglecting that which makes him so valuable to her. Who cares if he can't use magic, sucks at sword fighting, and makes political blunders? He saved her. Yep. She provides the necessary counterbalance to tip the scale back towards normal. It is Hamlet realizing that, in that sleep of death, what dreams may come. Yes, he wants everything, so much that it slips through his fingers. But that ambition isn't what's inherently bad here. Subaru's greatest strength is also his greatest weakness. He cares too much. Hmm. From the That's true. I'm not sure. But like, there's a point when mom calls him out on that in the backstory. Not a backstory, but during the, tr during the trial, and we see Mom, and, and Subaru, like, lies to himself about how he's, like, he doesn't care enough or something, but Mom, like, exactly counters that. He just called his shit out. His greatest strength is also his greatest weakness. He cares too much. He cares too much, exactly. Mom called him out for that. From the point of this fateful meeting, Subaru accomplishes the most he ever has since being dropped unceremoniously into this world. And, like, the more I think about Arc 3, the more insane it is. Like, this is... I think it's a week after the royal selection starts that Amelia Camp claims the victory over the white whale subjugation. Like, 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 the more I think about the passage of time and the events that's happening in order, like, literally, Subaru makes a fool of himself in the royal selection saying that he's a self-proclaimed knight. A week later, clears a fucking... <laughs> like a... Uh, like, like, that previous sword saint died trying to do this shit. He just does it a week, and then, 
merely hours after the subjugation of the white whale, takes down one of the most active archbishops. Like, like, <laughs> the, the more I think about it from other people's perspective and the timeline that is shown to us, <laughs> it's fucking crazy. It's, it's a couple, I, I forget, I forget the exact amount of days it took, but like, Literally, it's, it, it's been like at most a week or something, a couple days. Takes down the white whale that the source saint couldn't. Takes down the archbishop, one of the most active ones in me. <laughs> oh my god, like it's, it's fucking wild. And this is two months after arrival of Christ. Two months after arrival of Jesus Christ, Natsuki Super. It's crazy! It's fucking insane! He stops wasting his time with meaningless activities like challenging experienced knights to duels and instead focuses his efforts on what he does best. Yeah, just clearing, just, just performing miracles. Subaru, 3-0, the connections to the Bible, religion. Subaru literally is Jesus Christ. He is actually performing miracles in front of us, and we're not even thinking it's a big deal. We're not. He is actually Jesus Christ. Just performing miracles, pulling it out of his ass. But to us, we know what it took to get there, but it's like, what the fuck? He harnesses his easygoing and almost disarming demeanor into driving negotiations and becomes a steadfast pillar for the others to rally around. And by actually using his brain for once, he is able to make real progress towards his goals. At this point, it's kind of cliche to talk about ReZero like it's some subversive masterpiece, or <laughs> heaven forbid, a deconstruction. That's my favorite. When someone needs to make a random video and then like and think they're smart, it's a deconstruction of an isekai. <laughs> what is a deconstruction? I don't really know, but I just say it. But I think it offers something that I love to see in the media I consume. A truly flawed, self-aware main character. Yes, and that is something most people cannot swallow. They just want a perfect dude to always be good. But that's boring. It's fun for a bit. But if like, there's no challenge, there's no difficulty, why do I even care? I know the fucking main character is just gonna win. And you could say the same thing about Subaru because he can regress. But I don't think so, because you can clearly see how he struggles over and over, dying, looping, looping, and then he gets a successful run. It's just a flawed character that's aware of his own flaws and continues to be better. Is leagues ahead more enjoyable than just seeing just the perfect guy just handle everything in the perfect way possible every time. Someone who you might honestly classify as a bad person, but nonetheless recognizes their faults and strives to be better. It is that struggle of pushing against one's perceived nature, bolstering the good and discarding the bad, that really resonates with me and why I think Subaru is so interesting. Mm -hmm. I think it would do the medium good to have more moments like these. Absolutely. Where characters will let loose all that burdens them, laid most authors are fucking pussies and they have to satisfy their target audience who are a bunch of losers trying to self-insert themselves into a power fantasy main character and if they go against that then they feel too real about it and they get hurt and they cry. People genuinely can't watch shows like this because they're like, oh my god, the main character is stupid and he's being dumb. It's like, brother, that's part of the development. Like, like what do you want in a story? The dude just to be perfect from the beginning till the end? Where is the fun in that? Bear for all to see. Yeah, yeah, I know, show don't tell. But I think there is a time and a place for using moments of soliloquy and monologue as insights into who characters truly are. Or who they think they are. But who knows? Maybe I'm just biased as a fan of Monogatari. Oh. Thanks for watching. I made this video because I thought Suru's outburst was almost Shakespearean-esque. Forgive me if you think that's giving it too much credit. But the nah, brother. Keep glazing. You can cook, brother. Keep glazing. The more I went about making this video, the more parallels I noticed between Hamlet and ReZero. For example, while Hamlet, despite being told directly by the ghost of his father that Claudius is the killer, a ghost other people can see and corroborate, he still dawdles and delays, coming up with harebrained schemes instead of just confronting the problem. This dude Hamlet had connections to ghosts? What? <laughs> you, 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 this dude Hamlet has ghosts that saw everything and tells him, bro, 
Claudia? That bitch a demon. Yo, end her. You need to do it. Avenge us. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. Super has to just loop, loop, loop and try to figure out what's going on. Trying to fucking get more details. Bro, what the hell? Hamlet had it easy. In contrast, when Polonius, Laertes' father, dies, Laertes immediately takes action and confronts Hamlet. Giga Chad. Likewise, in ReZero, Julius takes on the role of Laertes. Giga Chad. Subaru is too blinded by his dislike of him to realize mm. all Julius does is speak the truth. Absolutely. The envy and the pride getting the best of Subaru as he doesn't even see this shining white knight is literally trying to help him in every point, even trying to make sure that, hey, you sure you want to confirm that, bro? You can still back out if you can and then sacrifice his own career to help him out. What a bro. And essentially exists to contrast against Subaru's incompetence. Then, of course, there's the whole, should I suffer through the pains of life or confront the fear of what may lie beyond? Which, at least to me, was pretty on the nose. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It's the yep. easiest way to support the channel, costs you nothing, and tells YouTube that this is a video worth watching. Mm, likes don't really do shit. Again, it's all about watch time and impression click through rate and the audience that the algorithm has deemed you to have. But hey, here's the video from Mr. Kamimashita. And this is a fucking big brain video and I am just out of my league. I am not in my element here watching this video, but essentially the summary is, Shakespeare, big brain author. Hamlet, story. Hamlet, main character. Subaru, main character. A lot of parallels. And the topic of, do we continue to suffer or just end this? And the introspection of Subaru thinking that he is nothing according to himself. That's the perception. But other people perceive him to be a hero. And then he can move forward and decide to challenge all the nightmares and the suffering and to achieve happiness while Hamlet's a fucking loser. That's it for me.